Hi, it's Monday. It's three o'clock. Welcome to Together Unlocked, brought to you as always by the Disability Arts Organisation Together 2012. We're based here in the main Paralympic host borough of Newham. I'm Jude Gosling, also known as the Artist U90, and with me in my studio in Canning Town is our chair, the artist Julie Newman. Before we do some more introductions and a bit of audio description, I'm going to go to the other end of our long virtual sofa in the West Midlands for some introduction and audio description from our co-hosts. Well, hi, good afternoon. Yeah, I, I am Robin Sergener. Um, I am one of the many uh, co-hosts of Together Unlocked TV. Very carefully said there. Um, uh, yeah, up here in uh, Sutton Coalfield, sitting on our rather comfy sofa with wheels. It's very good, actually. Everyone should have one. Uh, today I am sort of tidy-ish, um, having actually been out to a funeral this morning, so uh, but got changed again. So I have lovely grey -y blonde white hair, as that's a really good description. No rimmed black armed glasses. Uh, see, it's so difficult to remember that that's what they are, even though I'm looking at them uh, ever so slightly um, unshaven. And I'm wearing a dark blue polo shirt that says Queen's Park Rangers, the Millennium Stadium. And actually, to show, this must have been a fabulous quality T-shirt because on the back it says 03. So this T-shirt is, in fact, 17 years old. Now that might, it could just be that I'm tight, but hey, there you go. Over to you. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm uh, Josh Sergeant. I'm also one of the hosts of Together Unlock TV and I'm a PhD student um, in my spare time. Uh, I have uh, very kind of fluffy blonde hair today. Um, no glasses and I'm wearing a long sleeve gray uh, kind of quarter zip top. Um, that has white writing on it that says Chicago Bulls and then a red uh, ball face with white horns and um, because it's a logo of a basketball team. Well, that makes sense of the little blob that I'm seeing at this end now. So I have a very short... <laughs> no way to talk about Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I thought you were talking about Robin. So... <laughs> So I have a very short red tenor hair um, in a self-inflicted corona crop. I've got black plastic glasses, black wrist braces, silver jewellery, and a pretty fluorescent bright green short-sleeved top with a zip and a high neck. I think if a T-shirt doesn't last at least 20 years, it's not worth buying in the first place. But, um, <laughs> we are also, or we have been, a green business of the year. Julie... More introduction and audio description from you. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Julie Newman. I'm the chair of Together 2012. Um, between us, there's a little teddy who's wearing a medal this week. <laughs> How did he get that medal? He won. <laughs> <laughs> yes, London 2012 holds this week's record for the Clockwork Paralympics, but... For that, you will have to join us again on Wednesday. We also support the International Bear Hunt, which is why we have teddy bears in the background, ours wearing a gold medal because Indeed, we won yes. the Clockwork we Paralympics. Won it. Yes, we did. we did. We did find in March that Robin, as a Paralympian with many gold medals to his fame, found the idea of Clockwork Paralympics just a little bit disrespectful, but he's got so into it now that all he wants to do is win. win yeah. And we don't quite understand how they've managed to win the vast majority of them when it's supposed to be a game of chance. He join us on Wednesday. Winning is a habit. And true randomness isn't random. Yeah. And let's hang on to that thought because what we all need to do is win against coronavirus. And at 3.15, at the latest of our app dates will be coming up. Newham, very excitingly, is trialling the new NHS Test and Trace app. So we are going to be talking more about that later. But in the meantime, on a Friday... Sorry, Judy, did you have something to add? I was going to say what I look like. <laughs> oh, I, sorry. I got overexcited about the winning bear. Uh, so I, Not to mention the NHS app. And so the NHS sorry. app. Hooray. What do you look like, Judy? I look a, a little bit 
worse for wear, actually, having had a very relaxed weekend. Uh, I need to get myself back into gear for the week. I've got uh, silver and gold hair. I've got dark rimmed glasses. I'm currently wearing a white T-shirt, which says in black writing, choose love. I have a, which arm is it? I've got a, a silver torque bracelet with little wolf's heads on the inside. And I I treated myself to a, a cheapo, but nonetheless working smartwatch. So you couldn't really tell it was smart from looking at it, Wait, though. <laughs> does, every so often it comes on without <laughs> randomly. <laughs> yes. So it's sort of like, it's quite interesting still. I've only had it a couple of days this week. Yeah, it's, it's that smart. It goes, oi, do you not know the time? <laughs> yeah, I think before lockdown, I used to often yell at my phone, call yourself smart. But I think I've got to appreciate it a bit more in this, our digital year. On a Friday, we have a feature called Something for the Weekend, where we look at what's available across the internet and indeed offline to do at home. How did you guys get on at the weekend? Did you get round to doing any of the things that we recommended? Um, you can't remember? No. <laughs> I, I, first of all, I will make a, a humble apology that what's on reading is in fact what's on reading but I didn't read it as that because See? obviously, even though it's my birth town, <laughs> I didn't. In, I, I just didn't read it as reading. I was like, oh, it's reading because it's about literature and stuff. Anyway, so it was what's on reading, and they still have a whole host of fab things to follow up on. Um, uh, Don't worry, I, I did take the mic when I pointed it out <laughs> to him after the show. I was like, Are you sure that was reading and not reading? He's like, uh, well, I think this is a good opportunity to plug the fact that, including our update features, we have a highlights and links page under the main Together Unlocked TV menu. So if you want to follow up any of the links we've mentioned and to look at reading a stroke reading for yourself from last Friday, <laughs> just go straight down to pull down menu it's be the first section there today's highlights and links including today's app date should be up by about seven o'clock so in, in terms of what i actually did do um i i watched a film we had fun family film afternoon evening yesterday um and uh, we watched a film called wolf children but actually i'm going to talk about it if okay when we talk about photography and filmmaking just because of the the impact it had yeah i think that's a really good idea i mean we did we did a lot of home cinema which has become a default treat as we haven't actually left the house since march but thanks to various subscription services which i won't name individually we've been having a very nice time with fizzy drinks and microwave popcorn sweets ice creams and films that have been released in the last six months complete with our assistance dogs who are allowed at the cinema but do tend to make it a slightly nerve-wracking experience so actually that's been a kind of real plus for us having all these latest things coming out and you enjoyed that, didn't you? Because it was oh, your birthday last week. Yeah, I, I loved it. I had a really nice, chilled out weekend. We watched we watched a lot of films, and for the life of me, I can't think of one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll try and remember before <laughs> later. Yeah, it was nice to see some some modern films, but it was also nice to see a couple of old favourites as well. Yes, I mean, one of the things it's worth explaining to new new viewers at this point is in usual times, we run a disabled led artistic program for everybody. That's exhibitions, screenings and our national film festival. We have dance performances. We have theatre performances. We have carnival. We have street art. At the moment, we're delivering all of that through our Join In From Home online program, and we're going to play you a video about that later. One of the things we do for an outreach program is every weekday morning in more usual times in East Ham, we run free creative workshops for disabled people and anyone they want to bring with them. On a Monday, we would be doing photography and filmmaking or we would be doing dance filmmaking. So we're going to be telling you a bit more about that later. And then after 3.30, we'll be continuing our discussions about photography and filmmaking. And yeah, let's come back to some of those films then, because I think it if you can talk about films that are already 
easily available, mm. then I think it's much easier to kind of learn those techniques. What else did you do at the weekend, Josh? Um, so also on a streaming service, um, but Em and I, we watched two different things. We watched one, which was called um, One Day at Disney Shorts, um, which oh, are kind of seven okay. minute videos, uh, kind of interviewing people that have various jobs um, around so that it's, that's kind of animators. There was one on um, kind of songwriting. There was one, there's a guy that's a scuba diver that does underwater maintenance at the parks. Um, and that was really interesting. Um, but then also and it, it links in with the filmmaking and um, we've been watching the uh, kind of docu-series following the making of Frozen 2, um, which has been really, really interesting. Um, one on the kind of filmmaking side of it and the, the tips and things, um, but also in kind of the, the, the workspace and the environment that it was made in. And it's just really, really interesting. It really does sound that. Do you think you can send me the details to put up on the highlights and links page today? Yes. Because I also think it sounds like a really good series for anyone who's got children and teenagers interested in filmmaking. In more usual times, we've worked quite closely with Living Films, which is um, a project of Richard House Children's Hospice in Beckton. So we know that even seven-year-olds can make some yeah. cracking films, but sometimes it's difficult to find good teaching material. So, yeah, let's let's come on to that. And was there anything else you did at the weekend that you would like to share or recommend to other people, Robin or Josh? Or both? Uh, well, strangely enough, the one thing I did, which uh, is hardly a recommendation, but was we went and found a lovely um, tailor um, because EJ starts school, believe it or not, next week. Where's the summer holidays gone? Gosh. Um, and she needs to have, as a wheelchair user, school blazers are a pain. Um, so she's going to, we've had to have it shortened. So fingers crossed, um, yeah. when we go to pick it up next Saturday, it's going to look absolutely dandy. And I might even let, if I can persuade her, have a picture taken because actually most wheelchair users end up just wearing blazers that don't fit properly. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've got a kyphoscoliosis, which means I've got a spinal curvature. So um, even in days when we could get support without ironing, which, of course, hasn't happened since March. So nothing we wear, I should say, for audio description is ever ironed. <laughs> but, but yes, I kind of find even T-shirts, you know, start riding up over your shoulders. But if you have a jacket that's too long and you sit on it, then as you, you continue sort of moving through the day, it's kind of strangling you back to the back of your wheelchair, isn't it? And I think people often don't think about that. You see these fashion features around, oh, let's do everything with Velcro, or let's have things open easily, which is all very well as far as it goes. But I think, you know, people have to sit in blazers all day anyway. Do they really need to be long if young people are sitting at a desk, you know? It doesn't seem that practical, does it? Well, no, I mean, but it just seems, I mean, I, I think almost every school it's, it's blouse or shirt is, um, is compulsory and blazer. And then if you need a jumper, then you put that on between the two. But even in the summer, it's kind of gets to these days, it's, you can only take your blazer off in exceptional circumstances. I mean, at least Emily, <laughs> although to some annoyance of Emily because she thought she wanted to wear a tie um because it's a girls school they have like a, the, a tailored blouse where it doesn't have a top button and it comes across so it's you know it's actually I think it's got a really nice line and you don't have to worry about ties because you know I don't know about when you guys were at school but when I was at school the the, the more a, a ridiculous you could make your tie look then the more kudos you got from everyone else at school. <laughs> well, I went to an all-girls school in Colchester and we had kind of nylon shirts that buttoned up, buttoned up to the top so you felt like you were being strangled plus the tie. And if it wasn't done to a military standard, you were disciplined. So, oh, my um, goodness. 
Yes, those were the and days when I they didn't were... have to do that. But on the other hand, you <laughs> went to school in America and had yeah. to salute the flag every morning. So, you know, there's always something. This is a good point before we move on to our update to point out that young people are taking over the show this Friday and next Wednesday. And of course, next Monday, it's a bank holiday. So we wouldn't be streaming anyway. Maybe with so much going on about going back to school, we could perhaps have an interview with EJ and possibly even a couple of her friends and just talk about that. Maybe interview Robin, how parents feel, because I saw our prime minister jumping up and down on TV this morning saying nothing was more important. So let's discuss that a bit more in due course. But now it is time for updates. I can't believe that we've already done four updates. And we only knew about 10 days ago that Newham had the honour of testing the app. So we've both downloaded it and installed it. And if you haven't, Julie, I don't want to know. I don't have my letter. (laughs) Do you have? All right. So great. So today we are looking at questions and answers. Julie's question is she has not received her letter. So how can she download the app? And my answer is, as we told the audience on Friday, every household has been sent a letter with five random codes. They are not linked to your address. They are not linked to your name. All of this is anonymized. If you don't have five people in your household, you can pass them on. If, like my household at the moment, there are two people living here for the duration, you can have one of the other five codes. Thank you. Um, But because it was your birthday last week and you were resting at the weekend, I dare say you get off. So it's very easy to find a code, but it's also easy to get it another way. You can just contact the app team. We will stick the thing up under highlights and links. So, for example, if you run a business in Newham, but you don't live in Newham or you work in Newham, you want to trial it. You know, you've got more than five people living in the house because... For whatever reason, the council has licensed it for even more tenants than that. It's easy enough to get a code. Do you have other questions before I go on to some of the ones that are on social media? Um, I mean, obviously, up in Sutton Coalfield, the app hasn't reached us. So is there any kind of timeline on how long the pilot is before they do start to roll it out to further places because everyone talks oh we've got a track and trace app and it's like well have you really well i think it's all going to happen quite quickly and that's why there's been so little notice you know because nobody wants to hang around if something's ready quicker than you think it is you don't really want to sort of hang around for weeks so that you can schedule it properly It all depends on how successful the pilot is. And to a great extent, that depends on you, the viewers, not just people living in Newham, because everybody can help. What we need is as much feedback as possible about what makes an app accessible, what makes it inaccessible. What problems do you come across when you have to update it? Because, of course, it's going to need to be updated and it may always be automatic, but it may not. And just more generally, we've embraced this in our digital year as an opportunity to talk about all things app related. So we're interested. Are you an artist who's got a favourite app? Are you an artist who's presented your work as an app? Are you an arts organisation who has commissioned an app? I've already been speaking to one of them. So we're really interested to know that the timeline we've seen could be as early as next month but it really really depends on how successful we can make it i you know my gut feeling as one of the people that they describe as an internet pioneer from the sort of early 90s is that actually it's very nearly there that's not to say there aren't issues but it looks to me like the sort of key issues and particularly the technical issues because what scuppered the isle of Wight trial was the fact they were doing a different app at that point and the problem with that app is that it simply couldn't do what it needed to do because of the way the phones worked so what they've done is move over to the same underlying system that's being used throughout the world and that's based on apple and google coming up with a basically a change to their operating system to allow bluetooth to run in the background 
because phones, of course, these days are supposed to be energy saving, but the app works by on Bluetooth and it needs Bluetooth to be working all of the time, even when your phone is not switched off, powered down, but switched off in terms of, you know, you haven't got a screen showing. And that's been a cause, I think, of a lot of misunderstanding. I've seen quite a few people on social media say, why haven't they bothered to make the app for older phones? Why do you have to have a new phone? You don't have to have a new phone, but you do need to have the latest operating system. So for Apple, which is the phone that I use, it's 13.5 or later. That is a very recent update because, like I say, Apple and Google have written new software especially for this app. You know, that's how much they're supporting it. That is how seriously they take it. But they can't they can't go backwards, you know, they can't go back two or three years and foresee coronavirus and write this software into that code. So you do need to update. And if you can update, it is worth updating. Again, I'm really more of a Mac expert, but I spent lunchtime reading lots of reviews around the update, which had got nothing to do with the app. And generally speaking, it's an update that has been really welcomed. There's a further tiny update coming tonight, and I'm hoping that that means that it's even better because, of course, one of the problems is whenever you bring out a new system, it then needs some little tweaks. But this particular system, and I know Josh is nodding away, so I'm going to come on to him in a minute, is already designed to be much more secure. They discovered that under the older operating systems before 13, there was a security breach. That security breach still exists. So if you want to run the app and make sure nobody can hack your phone, install the update. Josh, have you got anything to add about the Apple and the iPhone? No, I was just nodding with um, kind of what you were saying around the the updates and, and writing the new code. Um, you know, best will in the world, you can have the, you know, the greatest programmers when all of a sudden you release it to, you know, the mass population. You know, if there is a bug in there, that even if, you know, it's one in 10,000 when you release it to 10 million people, all of a sudden... You get a wave of people going, oh, my God, my phone suddenly stopped working. And, um, so, you know, teething problems happen. You know, it, it doesn't mean that apps fail. It doesn't mean that, you know, what they're doing isn't going to work. You know, te technical glitches happen. And, you know, that's why the phones constantly get updates. And if you read most of the updates on your phone, you know, most of the time it's bug fix, stability improvement. And it's just tiny little kind of tweaks to things. It's not huge sweeping things it's going to change how your phone works it's you know behind the scenes back end things that you'll never even see and um, that just make it kind of super stable and and run properly so, and that's exactly why newham has been chosen because i've seen some very interesting conspiracy theories around that as well you know which yeah come on to if we have some time which i doubt but we have over 300,000 people in fact i believe it's closer to 360,000 people living in a very small area one in eight people speak a language that less than one percent of the rest of the borough speaks so we're a great place to test but it does need those numbers. It's like you say, you need 10,000 people to find a bug. Some bugs, you might need 100,000 people. And that's why we need everybody to sign up. So the next point, and it might be the last point we've got time to deal with today, but we will be doing update at 3.15 on every show, is people have been saying, I want to use the QR scanner but nobody has got a poster up yet. That, I think, is probably true. But think again. Businesses only knew about this pilot when everybody else in the borough did, which means that businesses only got their code in the post on Friday. If the post was delivered, they may only have got their codes in the post today. They then have to go online, download their code and they have to print out and put their poster up. Yes, in an ideal world, it would indeed have been so much better to have launched it with the businesses a week early, but presumably there wasn't time. We have suggested that when they launch the app 
across the country, maybe it's a good idea to just give the businesses as much notice as they can. But people are trying their best. Just because you don't see a poster today doesn't mean the same place won't have one up by tomorrow. Tell them about it. They may not even know. You know, there is no conspiracy going on here. We're all just trying our best with no additional resources um, at a time when a lot of people are on holiday. But we can make it work. We will make it work. And then it will be working for the rest of the UK. In the meantime, as I said at the beginning, tell us what you think about apps. What do you love? What do you hate? What are your favorites? Which of the ones do you love to loathe? Are you developing an app? You know, we're actually in the process of um, developing our own coloring book app for our Charlie and the Sea Monsters project. And I know other arts organizations are as well. So I'm just going to briefly put some text at the bottom of the page. Our, it, our website address is www.together2012.org.uk and you can contact us at info at together2012.org.uk. Now, as promised, we're just going to play you a short film to tell you more about the Join In From Home programme and some of the activities you can do that are linked to the club's programme we would usually be running on a Monday. Together 2012 is running a join in from home programme from our website together2012.org.uk. Click on the link at the top of the page, join in from home, to go straight to the main page where you have a wide range of accessible, inclusive, creative activities, mostly using things that you would already have at home. At the top of the page and throughout the pages, you will also see videos in British Sign Language to translate the site for deaf people. These videos can also be useful if you have difficulties reading and you simply want to hear more of the content. The Join In From Home programme is based on the activities that we would usually be running in East London. Dance Club usually meets on the fourth Monday of each month and they create improvised masked dance for the screen. Here you can also see their very first film where they simply made masks from paper plates, covered themselves with fabric and just moved gently to the music. You can hear as well, there's a very soundtrack. So we're suggesting that you make a mask out of anything you can think of. It could be a cardboard box, a paper bag, a paper plate is in here. Video yourself dancing in it and then share the video with us. We will show it on screen and we will also enter it into the dance programme of our film festival, which we run every December. If you're temporarily or permanently chair based, there's also a warm up you can do here created by our associate wheelchair dance company, Folk in Motion, and that focuses on relaxing your upper body and improving your breathing. The Photographers and Filmmakers Club usually meets on the second Monday of each month. We're inviting you to make a video at home with the theme of home and share it with us. You can use a phone or a camera, make any kind of film you wish, including drama, documentary, dance, animation, artist films, comedy, and they'll be eligible for a CAT award at our December Film Festival. You can also watch with us from home. In addition to Together 2012 TV with Together Unlocked and other live streams, we have the Together Disability Film Festival highlights. Each year we run the International Together Disability Film Festival in Stratford, bringing together a wide range of films by disabled filmmakers, as well as films about disability issues and disabled people. We always publish the programmes online with links to the films that are freely available. So we invite you to revisit our recent film festivals from the comfort of your own home and also to send us reviews of those films. And finally, you can sit back 
relax and enjoy videos of past live performances, artist talks and creative workshops that we've produced in the past here. So for example, from past festivals, we have documentation and films of creative dance workshops, street art performances, dances that the dance club have created, dance performances, and of course, we're continuing to add new activities on a regular basis. So that is our Join In From Home Photography and Filmmaking program. We've been talking quite a lot recently, haven't we, about how to make films using still images, often found images, and adding soundtracks that, again, could be found pieces of music, royalty-free music. Julie, are you able to kick us off on that, just to recap a little bit? Um. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've got something in my mind, but I don't know if it's going to fit into the general discussion. Go for it. Uh, I've been taking screenshots every day, really, of different things that are happening, partly as a diary, uh, partly as a record, partly as a way of investigating things that I don't know about. Um, and I realised that I don't always understand the spelling of something. I, I lose track of an image if it's something else similar comes along. And so it's sort of like it's quite a useful way of learning about things. So, for example, I've been taking still shots of the uh, the Coral City camera that I keep referring to. Um, and that's been very interesting because I've learned so much and continue to learn so much about fishes that I had no idea existed. And some of them are, are really they look as if they've just sort of crawled out of the primordial swamp. And can I just come in here for anybody who's not been a regular viewer? You can find the link to the Coral City Camera. Coral City Camera? Is that it? On our Friday section of the highlights and links page. And it's a very high quality live stream off the coast of Florida, isn't it? Yes, it's just by Miami it's on that side of the of the coast it's the Atlantic side um, and it's only about eight foot down so it's in quite shallow water it's a science art project and the concept is really to see about the ecosystem and also how coral little coral reefs can sustain themselves and and develop it's interesting to see the amount of parrotfish there because there's been a little bit of uh, an argument about parrotfish, whether they're positive or, or negative influence on coral growth. And I think what is appearing is that they're actually quite a positive influence because they eat off the algae. So that's documentation, isn't it? Um, I'm going to steer you back because we've seen two of Julie's films in the last couple of weeks. One was stills from Wimbledon that you'd put together and made a movie of using slideshow and... The other was stills of um, Broadstairs Folk Festival and the dancing. And you were talking about finding music there. Josh, I know you've been putting together some films for the youth takeover. Have you been producing anything or have you done anything in the past where you're using the sort of still images and maybe images you've got off the internet? Um, yeah, so one of the things that I'm putting together for... Uh, a week on Wednesday's show, which is the 2nd of September, um, I believe. Yes. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, is a, a film of photographs that I took at the um, London Paralympics. Um, so I've got kind of the whole series of, of images that I took um, on the uh, two or three days that I, that I went um, kind of across the games. Um, so I kind of picked out some some highlights and photos that I really like from from that um, and I'm kind of putting those together and um, into a film with some kind of music probably uh, it's still being edited um, but that will uh, that will go out on on next Wednesday's show um, as part of the youth takeover Yes, and I think one of the reasons we've picked it up now has been just the fact that it's much more difficult to go out and film. But on the internet, there is an awful lot of royalty-free footage or ways that you can combine footage. I mean, having said that, 
Um, in January, February, where I thought the year was going to look very, very different, I had started making some films of my poems. And in particular, I think there were two poems where I was using screen grabs, one called Travelling, which is about migrants and refugees. So that was a, quite an obvious one, you know, to pull out news photos and so on. Um, can't remember the other one off the top of my head, but that's where you're generating original footage, or rather you're, you're generating original sound, but you need something a bit more interesting than just a talking head to go with it. I think I'll just pop on here one of the short films from our Charlie and the Sea Monsters project. Charlie and the Sea Monsters you can find on our website, but there's also a website just called charlieandthesea-monsters.com. It's basically a download and print and colour comic without words about how the coronavirus is you know, how it spreads and how you can stop it. What we're doing in terms of an app is we're trying to turn that into a colouring book app. But we also made a little film of it. And the way we did the film was we just put the comic pictures in order. And I found some sound from, I think there's the BBC Sound Library, which is completely free if it's educational or personal use. And just searched for various sound libraries. The whole film because it's a 16 page comic with 40 pictures is over seven minutes. So the other thing we did was make some really short films that just took certain aspects, which I think is a lot more kind of easier to do actually than with the comic. And I thought because people had been talking about these QR posters that you put upside outside shops and things, or indeed, as we said on Friday, inside would be much safer. And I have told the app team that. Let's just have a quick look at this. It's some um, less than a minute, I know that. So you actually imagined, well, certainly I did sort of imagine the movement, even though there's still pictures by Hannah Rensor, because you've got the sound. And the sound was actually pretty easy to find. You know, there's one piece where the character Charlie um, spits and you see the, the saliva and the spit on the ground has got the coronavirus in it. And then the coronavirus gets onto the wheelchair wheels and so on and so forth. I was amazed that you could go sound effect, spit, and you just got so much choice depending on where you wanted, who you wanted to spit and where you wanted them to spit and so on and so forth. So if you've never tried a sound library before, but you do a little bit of video editing, check it out. They're all accessible. Even if you're doing all your filming and editing on the phone, they're very, very easily accessible through browsers. And you just click on the sound that you want to download it. I can see you having some thinking faces and nodding there. Have you got something to add, Robin and Josh? No, I was just thinking, um, not on the BBC Sounds one, but I've been using the YouTube Studio, um, which is a similar kind of music and sound effects. Brilliant. Library. We wanted um, to hear more about that, didn't we? Because it had been mentioned before, but nobody had any details. So how does it work? Um, so you need a YouTube, well, a Google account actually, because um, Google has you now own YouTube. Um, you need a, a, a Gmail um, or a YouTube account, which is um, free, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely free. You just need um, an email. Um, it doesn't even have to be your main email. You can make one. 
uh, purely for for kind of using the studio if you so wish. Um, but you go on uh, and you kind of go down to all, it's called audio library, um, and then it has a, a search bar and a filter, um, and you basically search for whatever theme or mood or sound effect that, that you want. Um, you can then play it in the browser to hear it. Um, and then if you like it, you can then download it. And then anything that's on there is kind of royalty, you know, royalty free. You're not going to get any kind of copyright issues um, for using it as, as far as I'm aware that that's kind of what it's there for is, is for the creators to have a, a library of and it's easier to access, free to use audio samples, not, you know, it's full songs or, or sound effects or anything. So has it got everything? It's got songs and sound effects? Yes, I believe so. Have you used that, Julie? No, not yet. I, I, I picked it up when Josh mentioned it before as a good thing to try out. And how does YouTube... How does this relationship work? Because usually I wouldn't contact YouTube until I was ready to upload and everything was finished. But does YouTube provide other ways that you can work in YouTube studio, as it were? Can you actually edit within YouTube? Um, I don't believe so. I, I haven't tried. Um, from what I can get, or how I've used it, is I've gone into the studio, gone into the audio library, and then downloaded the music that I've wanted um, and then put that in in my own editing software and um, I don't believe you can edit directly in YouTube uh, well um I don't know about I never tried yeah but... I don't know about sounds but you can certainly add audio uh text yeah you can you think about like subtitles yeah yeah. Yeah, then, I... yeah you can't edit a film directly in YouTube though we can always check it out a little bit more. I mean, certainly what I find YouTube Studio is a little bit confusing because really it's the page that opens if you click because you want to go live or upload a film. I think when it was all just called YouTube, it was slightly less confusing. But YouTube Studio is not complicated for because I know they've just changed the interface as well, haven't they? And um because they kept saying, oh, classic studio is going to be gone soon. And I thought, well, I would worry about that, but I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, the only one I've used is the one that um, I've got open now. It's a very simple um, kind of interface. It gives you uh, the, the track title, the genre, the mood of the, the song, uh, the artist and the duration. Um, and yet it, it's very kind of very easy to navigate and um, big bar at the top that's kind of search and filter. I mean, um, and, and I was going to say, of course, you know, if you do have a good smartphone um, or even a reasonable one, um, just try recording some sounds as well. I mean, you know, that's kind of me. I'm, I'm here sitting here thinking, well, if I was doing that, I would go and run a tap if I wanted to get running water and just record it or you know, ring a doorbell if I wanted a doorbell and, and it'd be a bit more kind of um See, this is the original point of view that I love so much because we're all sitting here. Oh, yes, we can check this out. We can check that out. And I was about to come on to Vimeo. But of course, that is absolutely what you can do is just make your own up. Do you want to give us a few tips for that, Robin? I mean, I know to you it is just as easy as breathing, but if it was somebody else and they just wanted to... Is it usual? There's just there's a bog standard, I think, recording program that comes on my iPhone, which is really seen almost as a dictaphone. Would you recommend just using those apps or would you download a particular app? Um, well, I, I mean, the voice memo on... Certainly, certainly, I, I've used the voice memo app um, on on the iPhone, um, and I, I've got. I ended up with two, so one must have come with it. To be honest with you, I think I then used another one because someone said, "Oh, use this one," because we used to use it for recording band practices, and you just stick the phone in the corner of the room, and it was actually remarkably good. I think, in in, in terms of uh, getting a specific sound. So let's say, for example, you know, running water. Um, 
what you what you want to try to do is make sure that there is no other sound going on with it so if the phone's ringing at the same time as the taps running you will record both sounds so sometimes and 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 you know is is so you're trying to get your recording device as close to the source as you can sorry the sound source um so that it only records that sound because it's going to be much louder than something that's further away again try it at different points of you know different distances i mean just something as simple as uh, as a, as an engineer as a sound engineer recording an acoustic guitar you think well how do you do that i would use three microphones in three different positions and then they all go together it's not three different sets of sounds because it's all one recording so putting them in different positions gives different sounds so again running the wall the, the sorry, hitting mics there you go running the running so just simply going back to the running water if you've got it right next to it it'll record just that sound but if you want to get the sound of the running water hitting the bottom of the metal sink or your porcelain sink whatever it is you'd hold it in a different place and then you'd get a bit of the echo of the sound. So there's just, you know, just trial and error. Yeah. I mean, we're talking earlier about watching the, the one day at Disney shorts. And um, one of the ones we watched was with one of their recording engineers. Um, so a lot, he actually records a lot of voice acting, um, but also records a lot of the sound effects. So they record, anything and everything basically that, that you can think of but they were doing something um called foley sound effects or, or foley artists um, which is named after a guy called jack foley who was a sound effects engineer it's basically it's performing the sound effects live to the film so not obviously in, in the cinema but they have whatever they're doing the sound effects for playing on a screen and then creating those sounds in time to the to the film and um, because it helps a little bit with kind of syncing it so one of the examples was from toy story and they had to the toys were all sliding down a big rope um so they had a big rope that they stretched out in the studio and mic'd it up with all their very very nice looking microphones um, and they had like a plastic spoon a wooden block or something, depending on the different toys and then when they were sliding down the rope that's where then sliding whatever they were using um on the rope and it meant that the sound effect clip that they got was the right length the right material on material because it was all done in time in, to the to the film and um, so actually that was with, with animation but if you were just using normal film you know like if you wanted water effects for example you know get it up on on whatever watch it and go okay i need the water to run now and need to stop now and then rather than kind of guessing and having to kind of cut things out which might make it weird you can literally just do it to your film and, and of course that's how bbc radio drama started with everybody making the live sound effects i'm actually delighted to say every year we have a four or five week festival in disability history month which is quite a fluid month. It starts on the 20th of November and goes on till Christmas. We usually start a little bit earlier than that. And I've been talking, we haven't released the programme yet. And for various reasons, we decided not to till the week after next. But I have been talking to a Foley artist about doing a Zoom workshop. So now you've talked to me about that, I shall just redouble my efforts to sign that Foley artist workshop up. I think that whole live sound thing is fascinating. If, however, like me, you've got limited use of your hands and limited energy, there is still that whole world of free sound waiting to be plundered. One of the reasons I've been talking about Foley work is around audio description and making performances more accessible to people with visual impairments. And in fact, the Charlie films started as a way of making the comic accessible to people with visual impairments by putting the sound effects on so these things are always very linked as well the other thing we've been talking about a lot over the last two or three weeks is nature in our own homes and outside our windows and how to make films of that 
I've been doing quite a bit and putting little bits on TikTok. I think in the last week or two, we've seen my um, little wriggly beasties in the water barrel at night. We talked about um, filming our respective fish tanks. So I'm just going to give you a few seconds if I can take the sound off because I think we were playing James Bond. <laughs> so this is just an ordinary tank with the iPhone outside of the glass. The strange background is really very, very old tin foil that was giving a sort of reflective surface that's deteriorated since then. The fish are all descended from three or four guppies that I had, oh goodness, probably 10 years ago. The ones with lots of colour are the males, the others are the females. Unlike most fish, they don't eat their own babies. So what you can see as well is various well, in fact, there's some fish in there that are so tiny that on this camera you can't see them, but you can see a real variety there. And um, that is my latest nature at home film. And I think I always watch the fish tank a lot, but a lot more since lockdown. Can I just come in here? There's something in my mind that everybody's been talking about without a warning. Please don't get your phone wet if you're using it to do the recording. It's really critical. If you're if you're recording taps and fish tanks and this, that and the other, don't stick it in the middle of it. But I have to say, Judy, these days modern phones can cope with quite a lot of water. But yes, it was the other side. Funnily enough, I do have a GoPro, which I bought specifically just before lockdown because I was having a lot of hassle as a wheelchair user in the street and I reluctantly decided I would start recording my life because I never used to share that, how times have changed. <laughs> in theory, it's so waterproof and it's got the quaintly named fisheye lens that I can drop it into the fish tank and get some real footage, but I haven't dared yet. And I'm still, I know in theory it'll be fine, but yeah. just yeah, have, I have did it the fine. other day with ours. So. <laughs> what did you say, Josh? I, I put my GoPro in our fish tank the other day. Um, so we're, we're using that footage at the moment for yeah, to this. make something yet to be disclosed. Um, I remember, I think the only bad accident I've had is I was really, really lucky because I was paid to go and work in Australia and perform and um, came back and, of course, inevitably put my iPhone into the machine. And I always remember phoning up the um, mobile phone company and they go, well, you can wash them and they're still okay. And I'm like, yeah, but I tumble dried it. <laughs> <laughs> My it, still even then it was only the SIM. The phone was still okay. So yeah. don't panic too much. But yes, you know, we should certainly kind of always use your phones carefully. And particularly if you've got the new NHS coronavirus app on it, because you don't want anything to damage that. So what other nature photography and tips have we got? Did anybody manage to get pictures of this famed lightning that was going on all of last week? Um, the only, we only had a little bit. We had huge thunder and lightning storms. Um, we didn't really have any lightning by our house. Um, yeah. it, it was all kind of off in the distance, uh, making very loud sounds i um i was just going to say though that um whilst it wasn't real nature and uh, i said i'd talk about wolf children at the beginning when coming back what we did at the weekend um is is that wolf wolf children emily emily bought the book and read it and went it's on dvd can we get it and she's you know she sort of didn't want us to she read the book called wolf children by whom uh i will get that info for you <laughs> okay. Put it on it, highlights. And it's it's it's, Jap it's a Japanese book, and then it's a Japanese film that's been dubbed. Um, but the film had talk about kind of slow TV and nature watch. It, it, it there was some there were lots and lots of moments of almost nothing happening, or even nothing happening, just standing in a meadow with the with the back and actually seeing the character from the back and being part of their uh thinking i'm trying to think of the contemplation that you know the contemplative moment that this was representing 
Um, and it was just, I mean, it was great. And I was saying to Joshua, what, you know, what kind of techniques are they using here? And they use about three, you know, because normally a Disney film is a Disney film and yeah, it's all super, super, super clever, but it is only one bit of method of filming, I, I guess. Where, whereas this had different things. It had kind of like stills and movement and then obviously some digital bits gone quick. We're running out of time. Yeah, no, it was... <laughs> kind of a mix of hand-drawn animation and then kind of plates and, and stills. It, it was it was quite well done. It does and... sound beautiful. I mean, we've been talking about things like slow TV, partly because it was getting popular anyway, the concept that you just watch a few minutes of the garden or the flowers nodding in the wind or, you know, whatever. Of course, it's become a lot more popular during lockdown. And I see that, you know, Julie's watching kind of wild fish, if you like. But I see the um, aquariums around the world, their live streams have got massive audiences compared to what they used to have. And it is just being able to watch something in real time and have the kind of calmness of the fish tank. But I do wonder whether some of this rushing around that we were all doing was cultural in the first place because they haven't just started to build moments where you just contemplate nature into Japanese stories. You know, they must have been there all along. And I think earlier in the year we were celebrating their spring festival where usually everybody goes to look at the cherry trees. And you can't really imagine a British festival where we all just go and stand and look at the flowers on the trees. And yet we have some beautiful trees and beautiful blossoms. So, you know, all of this kind of lockdown, rethinking things, yeah, even I was sort of standing staring at the garden as I'm doing increasingly just to look at a bit of green and thinking of what I used to think of and possibly still do is that a dreadful Wordsworth poem about standing and looking at the daffodils. You know, what is time? What is life if full of care? We have no time to stop and stare. And I thought that wouldn't have been a popular poem if you'd written it in the 21st century it would have been seen as nonsense and you know you had the kind of romantics of the 19th century really try, trying to reclaim that sense that you could just sit and enjoy nature but we had almost been losing it so yeah I think slow tv which of course brings us on to Wednesday when indeed we will have our usual virtual nature watch where an assistance dog goes out and shows us the outside world in a socially distanced way. I am waiting to hear back from Merlot on his holidays in Suffolk if he has more woodland for us. And if he doesn't, then Precious will be going out in the Costadel Canning Town as usual. She, I think I'm going to send her out in the evening because there's a storm coming. There's uh, another storm, Storm Francis, on its way Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and although I can send her out, I'm going to have to tether her, I think. <laughs> Otherwise, she's going to be blown away in the gusts. She's not as hearty as as. Well, Milo. come on. But she um, certainly, I think one thing that I'm finding increasingly funny is having put an old mirror up on the back fence. Every time she sees her reflection in it, she barks. So we might have another little bit of unexpected humour coming along there. We will also have our clockwork Paralympics. So... Yeah, Ned, we won actually. We yes, won Ted week, Fringe yeah. Bear will be retiring and new competitors for London 2012 and Birmingham 2022 will be coming forward for the Great Bear Hunt. We will also have our usual slots with virtual gaming and sport with Josh and last but by no means least at date at quarter past three. So we look forward to seeing all of you then. It's been a long hot and summer. And poetry. And the thing that I missed, which is the most important thing of all on a poetry. Wednesday, we will have poems from our pop-up poetry club and no promises, but possibly also if she's well enough for from our writer in residence, Penny Pepper. Till then, stay home, stay creative, stay well. Goodbye. Bye, guys. See you Wednesday.